Good Sunday morning and welcome to Inside Tennessee. I'm your moderator, John Becker. We are glad to have you with us on this Sunday morning. My colleague Vinay Simlot is here for the panel. Our guest this morning is the director of name, image and likeness at the University of Tennessee, Kat Jones. She's a lawyer by trade and now dealing with what is a revolutionary seismic event in college athletics. Kat, great to see you. Let's put this in perspective for our viewers who don't know about NIL and just its global impact on college athletics. If one is not so much on the scale, 10 is the biggest seismic event in college athletics, where would you put it? What number? Um, I might joke and say an 11, but, <laughs> yeah. but we'll, we'll go with a 10. Um, it definitely has been some have called revolutionary. Um, usually we get, get it called the wild, wild west. Um, now I like to just call it the west, though. It's here, we're ready to go, and we're going to have to roll with it, but it's definitely some, some large changes. So name, image, and likeness is what it is, NIL for short. Let's get some basics out. The University of Tennessee has 20 varsity sports, some 500 student athletes. How many of those student athletes have an NIL deal? I would say about 60 to almost 70 percent of our athletes have participated in some type of NIL deal. Um, I will add a little bit of an asterisk of there if, if, if we're not aware while we're hitting all of it, some international student athletes because of their visa status have restrictions. Um, so that sometimes pulls out about 11 percent of our athletes. So and another basic and we'll get into why you don't necessarily know specifics on this, but the range of money that athletes are receiving yearly is what to what? Yeah, we're talking about everything from a free meal all the way up to six figure deals in a year. Um, so it, it is an entire spectrum that really covers almost everything you can think of. Is six figures the top or are we looking at seven figure deals? Six figures is what we probably the top we saw for a little bit. I think we're going to start pushing into those seven if we haven't already crossed into those seven figure deals. And Kat, how does it work if I am an athlete and I want an NIL deal? How does somebody reach out to me and give me one of those? Yes, yeah, so there's all kind of different ways that this can go down. And that's what honestly makes this space so fun is that is that none of these look alike um, in a really good way. So we've seen everything from you already have a personal connection with someone and they want to engage you in an NIL deal for maybe their company. Company, um, to maybe you're using some type of app or marketplace we call them to engage in a deal or maybe you, your student athletes gonna go out there and hustle and you're gonna go up to that business and say hey I'm interested I think I'd be a good representation of your uh, of your company let's work on that deal and let's let's talk let's dive into that a little bit how what percentage of those deals are that kind of deal where a company is sponsoring someone versus a collective a group of of donors, alumni are coming together. Vinay and I are, are alumni. We put in a million bucks a piece and say, use that money to help lure you name your athlete. Yeah, collectives have been very active in this space and, and, and in a really good way. They're creating great opportunities for our student athletes, great community engagement events, um, really, really cool ROIs, whether that be a podcast or, or a autograph signing or a meet and greet. So collectives have been very, very active. Um, it's hard to hit the number because we're also then seeing collectives get in the space of working with brands too. Um, so it's everything from a very local active collective to super local um, brands that are excited. Think of a lot of our local favorite places here have probably engaged in NIL. And then the flip side, all the way up to those big national brands, your Nikes, your Adidas, your Under Armour, your Pepsi, your Coke, your Cheez-It, all of those are getting in this game as well. Mm -hmm. um, so. So it's kind of hard to, I guess, assign those percentages, but it's really been all of those who have been active partners. And we've seen collectives pop up sort of across the country tied to each university. What is sort of that relationship? Yeah, that, that's a great question that we get a lot, and it's changed over time. Um, all of this space, though it's only, we say, kind of been turned on for two years, all of those pieces have changed, and we've all had to evolve. Um, when that first started, we were we called it like an arm's length, a friendly arm's length, because we weren't sure. And we definitely want to do this the right way and not break any NCAA rules or state laws um, but over time we've gotten guidance from the NCA that those relationships can be closer and we can um, you know communicate with them on best ways to keep serving our student athletes and protecting our student athletes but also things like logistics when does it make sense to have an event when does it not those are where those pieces have become so much easier since that those lines of communication have been open and they've been they've been awesome partners and those collectives have opened up avenues for student athletes 
who you wouldn't traditionally think would be able to make money off of NIL. Yeah, it, it, NIL is one of my favorite things just, just because anyone can do it if you are willing to go put in the work and hustle and get unique and get creative because each one of our student athletes has a story to tell. It's going to look different for each one of them though. Um, so collectives have been great about, you know, kind of engaging them in different ways um, and engaging across all of our sports. That's something we're very passionate to get to say that all of our sports are engaging in NIL. It's definitely not one or two or three. Um, but I say anyone can can really find their, their niche. And sometimes you might have to work for your niche a little bit more, um, but you can find it and definitely go in there and, and work it. Do the athletes today owe some credit and dues to the O'Bannon brothers at UCLA? Is that where this started when they said as um, college athletes Athletes who played great hoops at that school and said, listen, you're making money on my name, image, and likeness as a university and as a shoe company, and I'm getting nothing. Is that where this started? 100%. I mean, you're spot on. We say that. Um, I like to say that kind of got the ball rolling. Uh, if you look to some of that case, it really should have pushed us probably even further. And it that did. year was what? What what year was that roughly? Is it in the 90s? Maybe? In the 90s. In the, in the 90s. But it took a long it took time. A, yeah, before we we really got there um, and if you if you get into that case they, they did really kind of agree with everything we're saying in this um, and it did push some boundaries of college athletics at the time it opened up some doors for what schools were now able to give after that case but that definitely got the the wheel rolling for NIL um, and probably if you were paying attention that that was the writing on the wall in the 90s that, that we're gonna push this thing forward in years to come we've got to take a quick break on inside Tennessee back with more of our conversation with Kat Jones she's the director Director of Name, Image, and Likeness at the University of Tennessee. More with Vinay Simlot right after this.